Hello, hello. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, greetings, blessings. I pray that everything is well with you and that things are good in your neck of the woods. God bless you. It's good to be with you this evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me pray and get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Lord, we thank you that we are able to take the time and make the time to spend moments with you going into your word and seeing what you would say to us in this day and time. Father, we pray that your love and your peace would be with us. We pray, O oh God, in these difficult times that our lives would have peace because you are the Prince of Peace and you rule and reign over us, in us, and around us. Father, we pray that you would continually pour out your presence and your love upon us and that we would continue to serve you in spirit and in truth and in the beauty, beauty of holiness. Bless us now as we look into this session. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, bless you. Thank you once again for joining me. Okay, let's do our little scripture rant. Let's get going. Um, we skipped last week. I didn't give you a new one, so we get a new one today. Yay! Lovely memorizing scripture. One of the wonderful things to do. Um, I wanted to mention to you too that um, sometimes when I want to memorize, at least when I was teaching my children scripture, teaching them to memorize scripture, I would give them, if they're having a difficulty remembering a particular passage or a particular memory verse, what I would do is give them a word out of it to attach to that particular scripture. So when they hear that scripture, that word would trigger them and it would cause them to remember what the scripture says. Because we are now up to 23 different you know, verses in the Bible. That's a lot. Well, we're going up to 31, so we're almost there, but that's a lot. And sometimes you need little words to trigger you, to let you know what the past, to remind you of what the passage says. So you could try that. Um, I'll probably expound on it a little bit more later in this broadcast. But let's get started. The first one is what? Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. John 11.35, Jesus wept. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Psalm 91 verse 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Luke 1, 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Deuteronomy 5, verse 7. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Matthew 5.14 Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Second Timothy 1 verse 7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. First John 4.19 We love him because he first loved us. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Psalm 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Matthew 11 verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isaiah 55 verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. 
2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. We're adding this one this evening. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. And it says, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. You want to say it again? 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. But the Lord is faithful who hath established you and keep and keep you from evil. Let me say that again. Second Thessalonians three verse three. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Okay, that's our twenty three verses, our scripture rant for this evening. Thank you so much for going through it with me. And like I said, you may want to add little words to trigger you to help you to remember what it says um like if you say psalm 119 105 lamp if you use the word lamp it'll trigger you to say okay thy word is a lamp unto my feet little things like that help you out and it helps you to really get it into your spirit so that you would not forget it it'll be a part of you forever these scriptures will be a part in your heart forever. They say we never unlearn anything. That's how great the Lord created us. That's how great Jehovah created us. When he created Adam, he created him so amazing. We never really forget anything. It's always in the back recesses of our mind. So all we have to do is call it forward. Use a trigger word to cause it to come rushing back and help us to remember what the scripture says. And like I also said, you could record yourself saying it on the phone or you could record, use your phone to record the vocal from this video and let it play. And you can say it through, straight through until you at the end. And the more you do that, the more it will stay in your memory. Practice makes perfect, what they say? They say perfect practice makes perfect. So if we perfectly practice the word of God, it will make us perfect. Okay, our topic for this evening is, May He Find Us Faithful. May He Find Us Faithful. The word faithful is a rarely used word in our world today. We don't use the word faithful very much because it's almost impossible to identify anyone that's truly faithful. Faithful, really? Because you would really be taking a chance saying that somebody is faithful. When you cannot swear for them, you cannot vouch for them. So how can you say they're faithful? Imagine an employer. You know, at the end of the year, they issue the Employee of the Year Award. And imagine an employer issuing that award at the end of the year to that faithful employee. That employee that was there on time every day, early, stayed late, that faithful employee. Only to have that same employee extend to him a letter of resignation two months later after you got the employee of the year award you give your boss a, your resignation letter i know he'd be shocked he'd be like where are you going what's going on what did what can we do and all that sort of stuff but the person tells him someone offer me more money more perks i get more benefits so i'm gone so who was he faithful to was he faithful to the employer or was he faithful to something else or someone else? And the employee would probably tell you that I earned that award. So you can't say I'm not a faithful employee. I was a faithful employee all the while I was here with you. I just wasn't faithful to you. So what was the employee faithful to? Of all those years, who was he faithful to? Coming to work on time, coming early, staying late. What was that all about? And the employee will probably say, well... I was faithful and I got my award. Thank you very much, but I'm out the door. Gone somewhere else where they're going to pay me more money. The employee was probably faithful to his family because family needed the money, so I'll get to work on time so I could keep my job, get any promotions I possibly could get on my job. Why? Because I'm faithful to my family. Not necessarily faithful to the job. I'm faithful to, the, to, to my family in order to provide for them family or I'm faithful to building my career. I want a good, you know, I want a good report from you when I leave. You can't say I wasn't faithful. I was always on time, always early. I was faithful. May not have been faithful to the company per se, but I was faithful to climbing that ladder of success and building this, you know, this some um, character and this reputation with the company to be an excellent employee that does everything that needs to be done on time. 
but the employer may not be so may not be so readily to accept that they would be really really upset it would be difficult to lose your best employee to lose your most valuable employee the company would not you know every company knows that it is difficult to find good help so the company would suffer a bit if you took your if your very best employee left the company that's a vacancy that you have to now fill and sometimes you get people come in either they don't know the job quite so well or of course they're gonna have to learn learn the the, the principles of your company the way you do things and all that that takes time whereas the person that was already there was already rolling they already had everything under under wraps and under control and they were rolling and really being beneficial to the company but it's time to go and the company would take a hit think of another aspect let's think of a marriage relationship there are very few cu cu couples who would be willing to declare undoubtedly declare that they know for a fact that their spouse is completely completely faithful totally 100 percent faithful i am sure my husband is faithful i am sure my wife is faithful <laughs> which who put their head on that chopping block to say yes my husband is faithful i'll put my head on the block my wife is faithful who put their head on that block but it just goes back to faithfulness saying that somebody is faithful is really taking a risk you can say they have been faithful in doing something over and over but are they faithful to the end are they faithful straight through will they stay with you forever can you say that they faithfully stay with you no one's putting their head on that block not unless you had your spouse locked in a basement somewhere and you have the only key so you know they haven't been able to leave that basement so they're definitely they've been faithful they've been 100 percent faithful because they can't get out the basement without the key that i have so yes i could swear for that person they've been faithful and that's the only way you can vouch for people sometimes because people will be people we are humans we will be people and in case you know because when you lock somebody in a basement they have no choice but if a person is free to do whatever they want to do they are gonna do whatever they want to do so it's wonderful to be able to say i'm really really i really believe with all my heart that my spouse is faithful to me that's good that's wonderful but just remember like we always say faithful everyone makes mistakes and we are all humans you cannot swear for anybody sometimes you can't even swear for yourself because it's like okay why am i thinking this why am i doing this why am i going we are humans we are fallible we are imperfect and sometimes things happen so faithfulness is really something that is kind of if and when because we may be faithful today and then tomorrow we change our mind and move on and go about our business can we still be considered faithful i was faithful at the time i was there so faithfulness is no longer an attainable standard it doesn't seem to be an attainable standard not even in marriages and that is sad and it's amazing but first corinthians 4 verse 1 to 2 says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful let him be found faithful this scripture clearly states that faithfulness is a requirement in the kingdom of god in a relationship with jesus christ faithfulness is a requirement as a servant of jehovah god we know about requirements we know about requirements in let's say everyday life requirements like you are required to have a valid passport if you wish to travel outside your home country you are required to have a valid passport a valid passport is required so if we're going to minister we're going to be ministers of christ ministers of jesus christ his ministers true ministers true stewards not just in name but also in action if we're going to be true stewards of the kingdom of god we must remember that true stewards must be faithful faithfulness is a requirement if we're going to be stewards because all church 
ministers, gospel, Christian leaders are stewards. We're stewarding the, the, the kingdom of God. We're really stewarding the people of God, taking care of them, managing them, so to speak. You know, bishops, apostles, prophets, deacons, ministers, evangelists, all of them. When we hold these offices in our church, we are ministers or stewards or servants of the Most High God. Now, what is the definition of a steward, though? What is a steward? What makes a person a steward? The definition says, one who manages or looks after the property of another. So, the scripture is saying, we who look after the property of Jehovah are called stewards. Stewards. This is a very important position, especially for those who are serving as stewards in the body of Christ. All who serve as stewards, servants, ministers in the body of Christ. This is a very, very important task. Sadly, many do not understand the gravity of this task. We don't understand how really important it is to Jehovah. We do not always understand that we are leading people to Jehovah or we are standing in the way of people getting to Jehovah. We are doing one of those two things. We are helping them along the path of righteousness, or we are hindering them. And sometimes we hinder. If we want to be honest, sometimes we hinder. And that is not something to be taken lightly. I remember when I first started teaching a Sunday school class, the children were like 8, 10 years old, and, you know, it's a local church, and I could read, so... I could do this. I was like, I could do this. I could do this. I can read. I can speak effect effectively enough. I could teach 10-year-olds. I could teach children. And it was just a few children. It was in a whole big class. And this was going to be so easy. That's what I thought. But very soon the Lord brought to me to, brought to my understanding, those children are important to him. I may look at them as just a couple of children, but they are important to him. They are lives that he want to shape. And he wants to use my gift to shape them. So this is very, very important. This is no the trivial thing. This is very important to Jehovah. And I needed to prepare to share his word. I needed to prepare to share. Share with the children what he wanted to say to them. They may be little children, but he required that I be faithful. Faithful to teach them the word of God. Teach them the word of God. He required that I be faithful. And in Matthew, Jesus, the book of Matthew, Jesus told a parable of a Lord who was leaving for a long journey. He was leaving his servants in charge of his property, and he gave the servants some talents to manage. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 20 and 21, it says, And so... He that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, you, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Faithful. How many times faithful in that passage? At least twice. Faithful. Thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful. Faithfulness is very important to Jehovah. This master had gone away. There was no one to tell the servants what to do or what not to do. They had no supervisor and they were left to govern themselves. When somebody is governing you, it's easy to look to somebody every day and say, okay, Move the bucket, move the, move the basket, put it here. It's 11 o'clock, go do this. It's 12 o'clock, go do that. It's easy when someone else has to tell you what to do. But when you have to manage yourself and remain faithful, sometimes people are faithful to carrying out the instructions of others. Sometimes that's, that's basically easy to do. They give you an instruction, they're paying you, so do what they say. But here is this Lord now. He's gone away. He's not there to tell them what to do. He's already trained them and given them talents, given them, you know, funds to carry out certain things while he's gone. Carry on the business. And so he's given them talents and he's given them responsibility, really. He's given them responsibility. And when this, is, when this happens, 
one of two things happen. One of two things happens when we're left to our own devices. And the wonderful thing about faithfulness is that when a person is faithful, they do not need a supervisor. They do not need a watchdog. They know what is required of them and they ensure that the task is completed. Every single time they make sure the task is completed faithfully and they don't need anybody watching them. And this type of person is very rare. It is rare to find these kind of people. But this is the ideal circumstances to find out what a servant is made of, what an employee is made of. This is the time to find out what this person is made of, what this child is made of, what the student is made of, what the employee is made of, what the spouse is made of. When they have no supervision and nobody to watch over them, the real person stands up. The real you stands up. And it shows and it, and it comes and reveals exactly what you're made of. In these situations, the faithful or the unfaithful characteristics are revealed. Either all your faithful characteristics are revealed or all your unfaithfulness start coming out and you start thinking about all the wicked things you could do. Ooh, ain't nobody here so I could do this and I could do that. And I could, mm -hmm. One of the two things comes up. You are now faithful to do exactly what you know would please your master or you're going to go out and do the things that you feel like do you felt like doing all along but he was there watching you and you couldn't do it so now you're free to do whatever you feel like doing so one of these shows up when you are given free reign to do whatever you want those characteristics are revealed this is when the diligent person shows up or the slacker shows up the person who diligently knows that oh, we wash the dishes at 8 o'clock in the morning. They need to wash the dishes at 8 o'clock. Or the slacker shows up who says, dishes? Who washing any dishes? I'll wash them next week. I need to wash them now. They ain't going nowhere. Yeah. The diligent person shows up or the slacker shows up. And that's because you now have no supervisor. Nobody watching over your shoulder. Nobody giving you instructions. And this is what happened. The master went away. And the servants are left to manage his household. When the manager returned, his stewards were there and they were doing whatever they were doing. Some of them, were, all of them were not like this one that had five talents. Some of them had talents and they didn't, one in fact had one talent and he didn't do anything with it. So he got his reward which was to be casted out. But this servant got a well done. He got, he got rewarded for a job well done. He was rewarded for his faithfulness. The steward, the master had given him control over his good. The master had given him control over his goods, his property. And this servant, this steward, faithfully made sure that the master benefited. The, man, the master received benefit for leaving this servant in charge, this steward in charge. The master's investment grew and his investment increased. It did not dis decrease and it did not remain the same. It increased. It was a benefit to him. The master experienced growth, growth in his investment because of this faithful servants. So therefore the master rewarded him. And this is how Jehovah functions. He always rewards faithfulness. Whenever we are faithful, he rewards us. He's not like these bosses and leaders that we know here in the world, rulers and everything, who would sometimes overlook your sacrifice, overlook your hard work, overlook your faithfulness and dedication, totally overlook it. Jehovah is not like that. And some of them even worse. They would reward others for the work that you've done. But Jehovah never does that. We all get what we have earned. Jehovah is faithful. And when we practice faithfulness, we are more like him. He is faithful. And when we practice faithfulness, we are like him. Faithful. The book of Luke chapter 16 verse 12 says, And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If somebody leaves something in your care and you can't care for that, who's going to go out and buy you something and give it to you for your own, to manage on your own? You can't even manage something that somebody is looking over you to make sure that you take care of it. 
when I give it to you, you're going to destroy it just the way you destroyed something that belongs to someone else. The church, the body of Christ, the ministry of, of Christianity, it belongs to Jehovah. This is why we must be so very careful how we carry out our task. Be careful how we carry them out. We must seek his leading, the Holy Spirit's leading, because the enemy is always seeking to get us off course, all about doing things that Jehovah never called us to do, all about doing things that are not benefiting the kingdom of God. In fact, they're, the benefit, they're only benefiting us, financial, physical things that we can get, rather than fulfilling the purpose for which Jehovah called us. Even worse, some of us become unconcerned and lazy. Jehovah, give us something to do, a project to work on, something to work on. And we get lazy and unconcerned and we don't do it. Do it halfway, slosh it around halfway, do it, or don't do it at all. And Jehovah is disappointed because we're not being faithful. As soon as we get a place where we have no time, no, no one to look over us, we just slack off or the quality of things that God has given us to do it suffers Jehovah made us stewards servants over his work over his people Jesus Christ is our Lord who has gone to prepare a place for us so this is the the analogy that Jesus was drawing he's gone to prepare a place for us left us here what he said tarry until I come and he left us here to do a work for him until he comes. And when he comes back, he will find out what we've been doing while he was gone. Each of us in our lifespan, while we were here as children of God, as ministers of the kingdom of God, he will, we will give an account. He left us a mandate, a charge. He left us a charge and he said it to his disciples before he ascended into heaven. When he was, after he rose from the dead and he was going back to heaven, the last thing he said to his disciples, it's, recording, it's recorded in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, and it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. That's the last thing he said to his disciples. It's amazing that Jesus gave this mandate to his disciples during a time when there was not even so much as a two-way radio for communication. Go ye into all the world? You don't even have a two-way radio to talk to somebody across the street. How are you going to talk to people around the world? He said, go ye. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So he's sending them all over the world, all over the world. They don't even have, like I say, they don't even have a two-way radio. They don't have a walkie-talkie. All nations? But how does it look today? How are we today? Look at us today. Through the windows of tech, through the wonders of technology, through technology and the amazing things that we, that man has been able to create since then, we can truly teach all nations. We can teach all nations. With the tap of our finger, we can speak to persons all over the world and share the good news of Jesus Christ. There's no excuse. We have emails, we have text messages, we have YouTube and Facebook videos and on and on and on we have that we can reach people all over the world and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't have to be a public forum, it could be a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing because everybody isn't prepared to do it, everybody doesn't feel the call to do it. But we are all called to, to spread the gospel. Every Christian is called to spread the gospel. And sometimes we get a bunch of things to our phone, all kind of encouraging words and stuff. That's spreading the gospel. Because we all know the internet is flooded with all kind of garbage. So every time we can send out an encouraging word, a scripture from the word of God, that is always 
accepted and that is always showing that we are being faithful faithful to the call to spread the gospel we have no excuse and it does not always have to be you speaking to millions you don't have to be speaking to millions you don't have to be speaking to thousands hundreds tens you could be speaking to one person sharing the gospel jehovah is holding us responsible for what he's placed on our hearts to do if he hasn't called you to go to the nations don't go to the nations if he's called you to go to your neighbor across the street go to the neighbor across the street your reward is just as wonderful as the person who win ten thousand because you're actually doing what jehovah gave you to do he didn't give you ten thousand he didn't give you the whole world he gave you one person it may be a grandchild a student in your class or a child from next door a neighbor child a cousin a friend just to share the gospel with he's placed them there for you to share the gospel with them be faithful and he will reward you be faithful and he will reward you we are all different and we will get different results some will draw millions and some will draw a few Jehovah does not require fantastic. He don't require us to be fantastic and mind blowing and every some of us will blow minds and do all the fantastic stuff. But some of us our names will never be heard. Well our names will never go to the ends of the earth. And that's fine. That's okay. Reach who he gave you to reach. Reach the people that are right around you. Reach the people that are right around you. He does not require the fantastic. He requires faithfulness whatever he give you to do be faithful with that and that's what happens sometimes we're so busy trying to be somebody else or fantastic or amazing or if he hasn't called you to be amazing be you be whoever you are be the person that he's called you to be sometimes and sometimes it's even a blessing when we are not um made famous when we're not famous and our name isn't up in lights Sometimes that's the best thing that could ever happen. That's a blessing in disguise. Why? Because the more people that see us, the more a chance for us to mess up and mess up a whole bunch of people because so many people are watching us or seeing us. The more people we see, the more people we influence. The more people we are responsible for, we will give an account to Jehovah for the people that we have influenced. for the kingdom or for foolishness we will give an account to him Romans 14 verse 12 says so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God Romans 14 12 so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God we will give an account one of my favorite sayings is to say that Jehovah is faithful Jehovah is faithful and that's because that what that's what I love most about him. I don't have to worry about waking up tomorrow morning and he he gone somewhere or don't love me no more. He does not change. He's always the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Yes, that is my favorite thing about Jehovah. And some of us did not grow up, you know, with a fairy tale childhood or a fairy tale upbringing. We had some very rough patches and things in our life was ever changing. Every time you turn around something was changed. We live here today, next week we move, we go on somewhere else, everything's so unstable and moving and one day it's this person and the next day it's the next person and it kept on changing. It becomes unstable. and you don't know what the next day hold but one thing we can remember about Jehovah is that he never changes he's always the same not this gone left and gone right no we don't have to worry about how things will look or what's going on things may look crazy it may look like it falling apart but he is promise he'll never leave us nor forsake us all we need to do is make sure that we are faithfully following Jehovah's requirements following his requirements we can leave the results to him once we are following his requirements no matter how rough things get all you do is pick up your bible and make sure you are following his requirements and that's it he takes care of the rest we can allow his faithfulness to provoke us to be faithful because he is so faithful to us we can 
be provoked to be faithful to him i must be faithful to god because he's been people say god has been so good to me i cannot tell at all all of that yeah he's been excellent he's been very very good to us so let's try and our best to be faithful once we are convinced that jehovah god will do what he says he will do that should inspire us to do what his word says that we should do we know he's going to do what he said he's going to do all we need to do is do what his word tells us to do what are we required to do love our neighbors do good to them that despitefully use you and persecute you that's our that's what he requires of us and that's what we need to get busy doing so that we can qualify for these wonderful things that he's going to do for us times will get difficult but eventually he will work it all out leave it all up to him it's his responsibility his word should inspire us to do what he says life will not always be perfect in fact the book of revelations says that things will get very rough in the last days they'll get really really rough really tough revelations 2 verse 10 says fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall be have tribulation 10 days be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life faithful unto death i will give you a crown of life at the beginning of this verse it speaks of suffering prison trial tribulation all the rough difficult stuff but how does it end how does it end you see if we remain faithful when did he say what did he say will happen what did he say will happen in the end be thou faithful unto death and i will give you a crown of life we must continue to focus on the end don't focus on all this stuff going on cuz everything will be shaking and going crazy and everything don't worry about that focus on the end how does the story end it ends with a crown of life an eternal crown of life any wise person would tell you it is far better to endure temporary a temporary period of suffering endure temporary suffering in order to obtain a reward that is eternal endure the temporary suffering because why at the end you are going to get a reward an eternal reward a reward and you will be rejoicing instant gratification is not always not always the best hardly ever is the best instant gratification always means that you're going to have to pay for it in the long run something negative is further down the road instant gratification delayed gratification can be more rewarding much more rewarding when you delay that gratification and wait for the real appointed time it's almost like picking a fruit too early imagine a mango if you pick it before it's really ready to be picked that'll never ripen you put that on your counter just be hard as a rock for weeks and trying to figure why it wouldn't ripen it's not going to ripen you picked it too early instant gratification leave it alone let it finish all it needs to do on the tree and then when you pick it at the right time it will be delicious and you'll really be able to enjoy it instant gratification is usually not the best way to go the book of james verse 1 chapter 1 verse 12 sorry james chapter 1 verse 12 says blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to them that love him crown of life at the end what do we get an eternal crown of life so let us be faithful let us focus on the end goal because all this that we are experiencing right now this thing we call life this up and down left and right twist turn all this is fleeting we could look around and tell it's fleeting because people are really passing away really quickly it is fleeting really fleeting life is rushing past us like a bullet train every time we turn around before we know it before we get to enjoy one moment of excitement oh such and such have i got a new car yay i got a new car before you know it something else happening 
and you run over the new car and move on to something else. Oh, I graduate from college. I graduated, I got my degree. That passed away and now you need to go figure out how you can get your next degree. Everything is just fleeting and flashing past us so quickly. On and on and on to the next fantastic thing. But my friends, let me tell you, keep your wits about you. Don't get caught up in all this spin and craziness. Keep your wits about you. Focus on the things that are eternal. Focus on the things that are eternal. What kind of things? Focus on love. Focus on joy. Focus on peace. Keep them close to you. Do everything within your power to keep your life in line with the word of God, with the spirit of God. Keep your life in line with him. Keep your life filled with love, joy, and peace. Don't allow all the chaos and craziness to creep into your life, to get into your heart and have you all nervous and anxious and crazy and going on and on about what's happening. Leave everything you cannot fix in Jehovah's hand and let him deal with it. Let him work it out. A lot of us are going through difficult times. Let it play itself out. Just continue to trust him. Continue to lean and depend on him and let him work it out. He'll work it out one step at a time. You may not wake up tomorrow morning and everything is resolved. But as time goes by, you'll see the in improvement. And before you know it, you'll be out of it looking back and saying, Wow, look what the Lord has brought me through. Trust me, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So don't worry about it. Anything you cannot fix, leave it in Jehovah's hand. Trust him. If you are busy, busy working in the kingdom and focused on being faithful to him and faithful to his word, he will work it all out. He will work it out. Jesus Christ is the wellspring. That's where our joy, peace, and love comes from. It comes from him. It can be found nowhere else in this world. Show me somewhere where you find love, joy, and peace in this physical world right now. Even if you find it, before you know it, remember we went back to being faithful, before you know it, the person changed their mind and gone about their business. Love, peace, joy, they are eternal things that come from Jesus Christ. So, only he can give them to us. Stay on course. Stay on course. Stay focused. Stay in the word of God. Stay focused on the end goal. The crown of life, stay focused. Keep that ever before you. Ever before you in your mind. No matter what's going on. You're getting rich, you're making money, you're building a new house, getting a new car. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes focused on that crown of life because that's eternal. Everything else you may get in this world, fleeting, passing away before you know it is gone and you're trying to figure out how that happened. Stay focused on the end goal. Pray that whenever Jesus Christ comes or calls for us, he will find us. May he find us faithful. God bless you, bless you. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I bless God for you. Let me pray and close. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify your holy name because you are truly faithful. Help us, Lord God, to focus on your faithfulness, knowing that if we are faithful in this life, you will give us a crown of life. Father, help us to remain focused and faithful and dedicated to your kingdom. Help us to continue to be faithfully reading your word, faithfully serving in whatever capacity you've placed us in, in this in the church, in the body of Christ. Whatever task you've given us, Lord, help us to continue to faithfully faithfully carry them out and father as we continue to serve you and continue to love you we pray god that you give us the strength the wisdom and the wherewithal to go ahead and just trust you with everything some things are falling apart some things are looking crazy father but we look to you because we look to you you do are where our help come from we look to the hills from where our help come it comes from the lord who made the heavens and the earth so we trust you and we know that you are able to make all things work together for our good because we love you and we trust you. Bless us now, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, bless you. Okay, let's do uh, finish up with our scripture rant for this evening. We'll start at the bottom and go to the top. Let's go. The new one we learned today, which is it? Second Thessalonians 3 verse 3. 
but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Colossians 3 verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Isaiah 55 verse 6, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Matthew 11:30 For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Psalm 122 verse 1 I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Genesis 1 and 1 In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. 1 John 4:19 We love him because he first loved us. 2 Timothy 1:7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Matthew 5, 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Deuteronomy 5, verse 7, Thou shalt have none of the gods before me. Luke 1, 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. 1 John 4, 8, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Romans 12, 21, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, and forever. Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Hebrews 11 verse 1, now faith is the, subs faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Psalm 91 verse 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. John 11.35, Jesus wept. Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Psalm 119.105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Okay, that is our scripture rant. I really, really hope this is helping you, helping you to, you know, get more and more of the word of God within your heart, within your mind, within your spirit. Uh, God bless you, bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, also, I am transferring um, some of the videos of the past onto a YouTube channel that I've started. Um, it's Sword Sharpness Bahamas, Sword Sharpness Bahamas, and it's on YouTube. There's a lot of other um, sessions like this. Um, um, we're now up to 204, so 214, 214, 200 and something. Anyway, over 200 videos. Are, you know, I'm transferring them over. So there may be something in there that might bless you, help you to understand the Word of God a little bit more. But I pray that's a blessing to you. Um, I hope that uh, this session was a blessing for you as well. And I thank you so much for joining me. And like I always say, you could have been doing anything else. But you decided to spend these moments with me. Thank you ever so much. And may Jehovah continually bless your life. Goodbye.